Hello and welcome to this video about resultant forces. I'd like you to think about the word resultant as meaning a single overall force. Because when we think about forces acting on objects we know that there can be a number of forces acting at one time and in different directions. For example, if we take this um, circle for example, if we think of this as a ball, there could be a forward force on the ball of say 20 newtons and a backwards force of say 10 newtons. And the important thing with resultant forces is with, that we take the direction into account. So if we take everything to the right as a plus direction and everything to the left as a minus direction we can say that we've got plus 20 newtons and in the minus direction minus 10 newtons so if we take 10 away from 20 we can work out our resultant force that means taking these two forces into account Let's give a number to a single overall force acting on the object. Now if you've got 20 newtons to the right, 10 newtons to the left, you'll have an overall force to the right. When you write about resultant forces, you have to give the size and the direction of the force as well. Let's take this block then, for example, we could have 30 newtons to the right this time and 50 newtons to the left. So this time we've got 30 newtons in the forward direction, 50 newtons in the backwards direction. So in this case we would have a resultant force of 20 newtons this way, 20 newtons to the left because if you've got 50 this way but only 30 that way you've got 20 left over acting to the left so our resultant force if we were to give a single overall force on the object would be 20 newtons to the left this also works if you've got a number of forces acting on one object for example here on this block we could have, for example, 10 newtons and 20 newtons acting to the right and 40 newtons acting to the left. In this case, you just add up everything on the right. So you've got in total there 30 newtons, if we take these two into account, 30 newtons to the right and 40 newtons to the left so our resultant force would be 10 newtons to the left again write the size and the direction so 10 newtons to the left we can also have a case where the resultant force is zero for example if we had a couple of forces acting here 20 newtons and 5 newtons and in the opposite direction if we had 25 newtons you would see that on the right here we've got 25 newtons in total to the right and 25 newtons to the left so our resultant force is zero zero newtons there's no resultant force acting on the object when you take both directions into account now there's a couple of key things to discuss about resultant forces there's a couple of key rules that is you have to work out whether the object you're looking at is stationary or moving and we'll look at stationary first and the rule says that if the resultant force is zero the object will remain stationary so that just means still so for example <coughs> this car here if the resultant force was zero newtons that car would remain stationary 
<coughs> don't forget the the units for newtons are a capital n never write it as little n they're always capital n which stands for newtons you can write the word as well zero okay but normally we see it as zero newtons like that second scenario then the object still stationary but this time if the resultant force is not zero the object will accelerate in the direction of the resultant force so for example if we had um, the force of the engine um, at for example let's say 200 newtons providing a forward force and a smaller force in the opposite direction then from stationary this object will then accelerate in the direction of the resultant force so if we work out the resultant force we've got 200 that way 50 that way so we'd have a resultant force of 150 newtons to the right therefore the object that was stationary now there's a resultant force to the right it will accelerate to the right the other scenario that we've got is when the object is already moving and again we've got two scenarios one if the resultant force is zero the object will continue to move at the same speed so for example if this moving car had a force in the forward direction of 100 newtons a force in the opposite direction of 100 newtons then there would be zero newtons of resultant force because you've got 100 newtons in one direction 100 newtons in the opposite therefore the resultant force is zero and in that case it doesn't mean the object stopped it's still moving but it moves at the same speed at a constant speed on the other hand if the resultant force is not zero the object will accelerate in the direction of the resultant force for example if you had 200 newtons in this direction 100 newtons in this direction you would have a resultant force of 100 newtons to the right and therefore the car would accelerate to the right so these bottom ones on both cases where the resultant force is not zero whether it's moving or stationary it will then result in an acceleration in the direction of the resultant force the one you've got to watch out for is when the resultant force is zero you've got to really look at whether the object is moving to start off with or like in the scenario before if the object is stationary because if it's stationary and it has a resultant force of zero it will remain stationary but if it's already moving then that means it will still move but it will just move at the same speed okay so here are some questions for you to try there's three scenarios here we've got a falling parachute a dog standing still and a moving boat what I'd like you to do is describe the motion of the following objects if the following forces were applied so I've written the forces on there that's the initial scenario up here if those forces were then applied what would happen to the motion and therefore the movement of the object so pause the video now have a go and then come back and see if you got them right so for the first one we've got a falling parachute so he's already moving so he will continue to move and because the resultant force is zero newtons because you've got 500 newtons in that direction 500 newtons in the opposite direction he will continue to move at a steady speed or at the same speed and in this case the falling objects we actually call this terminal velocity and we'll talk about this in another video in the second scenario started off with a dog standing still he has then got 
50 newtons in that direction, 5 newtons in the other direction, so you have resultant force of 45 newtons to the right. Therefore, if he was standing still first of all, he would accelerate to the right. So he would start to speed up in that direction towards where the resultant force is acting. The final option, you've got a moving boat. If you have a look at the forces acting on the boat, you've got resultant force of 20 newtons to the right. Therefore, it's already moving. It will then start to accelerate to the right. OK, so with these questions, do look out for what the object's doing initially. They won't necessarily tell you it's stationary or it's moving. They'll just describe it. For example, where I've put there, the dog is standing still. They might say the car is parked or whatever scenario it is. So look out for that. Work out the resultant force and then you can see what's happening with the motion of the um, object. They'll use the word motion a lot in the exams to think about that as movement okay what is the object doing if you found this video useful then please press the like button below and feel free to subscribe thanks for watching